Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make the cathedral window Christmas ornament. Now when I get ready to decorate my Christmas tree and I bring out that box of Christmas ornaments, it's that special time for our family to reminisce about Christmas has gone by and where do we get that ornament and where do we get this ornament. So it's really fun to make handmade ornaments not only for yourself but for gift giving. So let me show you how to get started. These are really easy to make and really fun. We'll have all these measurements on our download, free download part of our website. That's at the very bottom. Click on that link and we'll have all these measurements there for you. So let's get started with the main fabric, which is cut to a 10 by 10. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and pre-starch my fabric. Um, actually sizing, I shouldn't say starch, it's more sizing. Starch is a little bit heavy, whereas sizing just gives it a little bit more body. I really am I'm using sizing more than I ever have before and I just love how it gives my fabric just a little bit more body, especially when I'm gonna press it. So I went ahead um, and pre-sized all of these. And the first thing we'll do is we're just gonna fold this right sides together in half and give this a good press. Make sure your iron is on its hottest setting. We'll do the same thing, folding again with a really nice firm crease. We, you definitely want to see those lines because for the next step, I can see my lines here. In fact, let's do this right over top of the pressing mat because the last thing I want to do is, is move it. Okay, so now I've got my pressing mat in front of me and I see my crease lines. So we will bring up those corners so they go right in the middle. So have your iron real close by. And I recommend you bring all four corners to the middle before you do any pressing just to make sure everything is as symmetrical as possible. Okay, now we'll go ahead and press again very well. Just keep hanging on to everything. So you can see, you wanna take your time on this step so that everything is folded as symmetrical as possible because otherwise you won't get that cathedral window effect evenly all the way across the ornament. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna turn it and now these points will come to the middle. So I'm gonna repeat that step. I'm gonna bring all four steps, or all four corners, <laughs> to the middle, just like I previously did, and then press again. Okay. Okay, now, the, the ornaments have um, a part behind here that we're referring to as the center. So I will take my center fabric, which is um, today I'm using the stripe. I'm going to open up my little flaps and I'm going to put that center piece right inside here. Now I'm going to bring these back closed. You need to have some pins handy. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and pin that closed. Okay, I want to show you what this looks like. We're going to take this to the sewing machine and starting a quarter inch above the center, we're going to go straight down through the center and a quarter inch down below. We'll repeat that going left to right, again a quarter inch to the left of center, stitch all the way through and stop at a quarter inch beyond that and reinforce that beginning and end because your cathedral, your openings are gonna pivot around that. So that needs to be very much reinforced. You might even wanna shorten your stitch length. Now that I've sewn the little uh, plus sign basically in the center of our ornament, now we're going to add the accent fabric. That's this part right here that's featured on the ornament. That's cut to four and a half square. This is where using one of those six and a half inch rollers is so handy, it's just the perfect size. You'll cut one diagonal and then cut the other. So cut here, and then I like to do that without even disturbing the fabric. That's where one of those spinning mats is so handy. 
because then you can just rotate the mat. And we do have those available on the website too. Wonderful, wonderful um, invention. I, I love my spinning mat. Now you'll take your accent pieces. You can either pin or glue. I really like the glue feature um, because I, I just like how flat it lies when it's glued versus pinned. And what you'll do with your accent pieces is you've got these this triangle here. Now stay an eighth of an inch away. So, and that's just a visual eighth of an inch. This side will line up exactly with the red. So I want you to see this little flap. You see this here? I'm staying about an eighth of an inch away from here and here. But on this side, it's flush. So I'll go ahead and add some drops of glue. There it comes. And I'm just going to glue that in place. Again, you could pin that if you really don't like glue. This is the Roxanne's glue base. I, I use this stuff for everything. Um, applique. Just trying to secure something in place, just like this. So it's going to hold steady while I'm stitching it down. So we're going to stay an eighth of an inch away from those two sides, flush with the long side and you'll do this all the way around for all four sides. When I come back, we'll go to the next step. Now that I have the accent piece glued in all four sides, this is the part, this is my favorite part. We'll take this to the sewing machine. L look how this happens. We just kind of roll this open and it just naturally opens up. Um, if you use the zipper foot like I'm using today, it seems like the kind of spade on that zipper foot just kind of keeps keeping this open for you. Now on a zipper foot, um, at least with my zipper foot, I don't know if this is true of all zipper feet on different machines. I have kind of a set here. In fact, let me show you this. I, I want to show this to you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. There's like a center lane and I can either attach it on my presser uh, shaft to the left or the right of that bridge. Now initially, when I'm doing the opening these that are on the left side, I am attaching this on the left side. When I go back to do the ones on the right side, I will reattach the zipper foot on the right side. Now if you don't have a zipper foot, you don't need to worry about that. You can use really any presser foot that you have. It's just I found that the zipper foot just the, just the kind of plow, I guess, that it just kind of keeps pressing it open as I'm stitching. So it seems to work really well for me. I'm sure you have your favorite presser feet and use whatever works for you. But let's take this to the sewing machine. And again, you're just, I don't, I'm not using any pins. I'm just gonna start here in the center, reinforce and trim or uh, stitch pretty close to the edge and then here at the end, you can kind of just sew right off of that because we will be attaching the, the backing. You don't really need to reinforce down here, but I would recommend that in the center. So let's go, let's go stitch this together. This is a lot of fun. And use coordinating thread because you definitely will be seeing this now. So we're going to start right here and I'm going to reinforce that as you normally would. And I'm just going to stitch, I don't know, as close to the edge. Just be consistent. Whatever you do, just be consistent. And I'm just going to sew right off of that. I'm going to show this to you. See how neat that looks? Now you'll go ahead and rather than do this flap, what I recommend is you do all the ones to the left. Do this one, do this one, and do this one. Then you'll come back, we'll switch the presser foot. Okay, let's just do that together. I, I want you to see that too. So let's pretend that I've already done all of those, all of these other ones, okay? Then I would go back and I would switch my presser foot to the other side. The zipper foot because I again I really like starting from the center oh let's see here a little scissors just trim that off I do recommend you trim your your threads as you go otherwise they can get tangled up create problems with your sewing machine 
Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just pressing this open with my fingers. Get our thread ready to go. Whatever distance you were from the edge on the left side, just be the same from the right. Again, whatever you do on the left, do on the right. So it's symmetrical. And we're just gonna press that open the same amount as we did on the other side. And so right off the end again, look how fun this is. Look how neat that looks. So, of course, then you do all the ones on the right. Now I went ahead and did all these ahead of time just to save us some time. So this is what this is gonna look like at this point. Now, of course, you need the hanger and we hung this on the point. So you'll need to get an eight inch ribbon. We've got, we just picked a gold. Um, don't go like this, but rather fold it like that so that the ornament doesn't turn on the Christmas tree. So you see what I'm saying is don't fold like this, but fold it like that. Go ahead and bring that into your corner. Overlap those. Let's get a pin and we're going to secure that. With your, your backing fabric, we just chose a white uh, shimmer dot, something pretty. This is a five by five. So, of course, right sides together. We'll go ahead, we'll pin this in place. Leave a nice opening, probably three or four inches, because that is a lot of fabric to be turning through. Um, so, as always, wherever you start, reinforce, and wherever you end, reinforce. When I come back, we'll go ahead and turn it right side out. We'll get this stuff stitched up, and you'll be ready to hang your ornament on your Christmas tree. So I have sewn around the, the three sides and left the opening on the fourth side. Now I do recommend you go ahead and clip those corners just to reduce the bulk so it lays a little bit flatter. Don't get too close to your stitching though. Stay a fair distance away. And then we'll go ahead and turn this through. and see how our ornament looks. This is always the most exciting part, just turning everything through. And if you have a gift exchange at work, a lot of uh, places have ornament exchanges. You know, rather than running out to Hallmark and buying one, how about making something? People would just really appreciate a handmade gift from you and um, makes it so much more special. So now we'll go ahead and just keep pushing it through like you would anything that you turn right side out. All right, look at our ornament, isn't it beautiful? And we go ahead and use some polyfill, just ordinary polyfill, and just stuff your ornament as full as you'd like. You know what, actually, let me, let me show you something. I've learned this over the years. Because we used a quarter inch seam all the way around, let me uh, clip those threads. Before I stuff it, what I like to do is take this to the pressing mat and actually press that quarter inch seam because once it's stuffed, you kind of can't really press it. It's just too bulky. So go ahead and get that quarter inch seam pressed. You do the same thing on the other side. Then you'll go ahead and add your polyfill. These are the things you learn after the years of crafting and quilting, and it's fun to pass those along to save people frustration and trouble when they're you know, doing their own projects. So you'll go ahead and just stuff it as full as you want. You've got your quarter inch seams, so you'll just use your Richard Hemming needles, which we I love these needles, they're the size four embroidery, but don't be fooled. I use them for way more than embroidery. I use them for almost everything. Anytime I need a whip stitch and opening closed, I use those. Embroidery, obviously I use those. Um, grab whatever coordinating thread you want. Just whip stitch that closed. And then for the center, we just put a button there. And of course you can just squeeze that and that'll give it that little um, 
pillowcase effect. So I hope you enjoy learning how to make cathedral window ornaments from shabby fabrics.